Tom here from Warner Systems. And I've been waiting to peel the plastic off of this for, well, a couple weeks. So I'm gonna peel it off right now to reveal something that maybe you've seen the tweet already from Netgate, but yes, this is the new SG2100 that Netgate has for running PF Sense. And I'm gonna review this. I like it, I've been testing it. Now, full disclosure as always, this was provided from Netgate within early release and they request that Tom not talk about it until uh, it's been released, which has been released. And I've been using this at home for a little while. Matter of fact, a couple of the videos uh, you've seen were actually done using this at home. Uh, I just didn't show you the name of the actual device because I was using this one right here. This is actually the same one from my house and now this is from my house. And But don't worry, there's still internet at my house. That's I just keep rotating firewalls and testing them. Anyways, but this was provided uh, as a demo unit and I've been reviewing it and I was gonna cover all the hard hardware details and uh, all the fun stuff related to it. Before we dive on to, into that, if you could click that, click that like button, hard to say sometimes, click that like button and first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. So let's start here looking at the lineup of ARM available devices from NetGate in 2020. So NetGate has this SG-1100. This is the 179 box, pretty good. I've used quite a few of these. We recommend to a lot of, especially home users, um, provided you don't have a internet connection that exceeds about 400 uh, megs, these will route perfectly fine. They start to choke a little bit when you get up to even higher speeds. Um, they'll go a little bit faster, but either way, there's some limitations to a $179 device. I like it. It's very reliable, but well, that's the limitation. The other limitation is we only got three ports on here and they're out of the box configured as three logical ports. Then we look over here at the SG3100, which has a four ports as one port, essentially one logical, but four ports as a switch. So, hey, cool. We got switches and VLANs and ability to do some uh, custom configurations and don't need to buy a switch to be able to have a couple devices plugged in. Then we have the WAN port and the opt port, kind of the optional if configure it however you want, including for a failover mode. So that's definitely a great option. And this one's $399. So we got $179, $399. And now let me set these over to the side here. We have for $299, you can get this NetGate SG1100. Now, one of the things I complained, I believe before I did a video, but there's no little screw holes to mount this. And I guess they just expected you to set it down like that. Well, I mean, I think there's a bracket you can get for it or 3D print one or just zip tie it to if you have a side mount wall, which of course is ugly, but there's different ways you can mount it. But my favorite way to mount most any of these routers is just to have it molded in right here with a screw mold so I can just click. There we go. Now, even with that, it stands off enough and this is offset enough and it doesn't really get that warm to still be able to easily dissipate heat. So that's not a problem. And of course we have these switch ports on here and this is especially for home users and some of the even really small offices we deal with where they just have a couple devices, they need a switch port on there. It's really convenient. They want to be able to plug in their Wi-Fi, maybe have a couple VLANs on there and they don't want to have to pay the extra for a managed switch. And I know a managed switch costs less than the 120 price difference, the $120 price bump to go from this to this, but don't worry, there's more. First, we have an SFP, not SFP+. Plus. Now that SFP port over here, great for being able to use, exactly like we're doing here, a fiber handoff directly to the PFSense device. So if you have your ISP coming in as a fiber, maybe that fiber is far away and then you'd have to get a fiber and convert it over to RJ45. Well, they can forego that because now you can plug it in SFP directly to the device. Second, we have 
an RJ45 port, but that's not a logical second port. That is a shared medium. These cannot be plugged in at the same time. So that is essentially only a single WAN port. Now in advanced configuration, yes, you can break these four ports out, which by out of the box work as a switch. They can be configured to be a logical port to create one maybe as a failover if that's a scenario that you need set up. So it is something that can be done, but maybe you should look at some of the other ones uh, if you really need that. Spend an extra hundred dollars and get the one that has the extra logical ports on there. But nonetheless, we have that. And then we have our barrel connector. I like this because that means I can dangle it by the power cord with no worries of it coming out. Now that is also on the 3100, but the SG1100 just has this one. So if we were to pull too hard and slide it, you just pop the power cord out. Completely not a big deal for us, you know, like a home user, you know, but if you're if you're trying to reach around, you're trying to plug something in the back and you bump it and the cord was a little tight, um, not having that come out. I don't know. I like these connectors. They have a little screw type in there so they don't just fall out. So what are the other details about this? And one of the other things they've done is add a memory bump. So I, as I said, I was using this for a few weeks at home. I had no issues with it at all. And this does have eight gigs of memory in it. That means loading extra plugins, not a problem. Now, if you're familiar with the other NEC8 devices, you can go here to interface and this shows up for switches. This is on devices uh, from NEC8 that have this switch port built in. There's that VLAN option. And by default, all the ports are tagged. So any VLAN you create just goes out like normal, but then there's an advanced option where you can set this up to do that cutting out of the ports to make them logical ports for, you know, trunking them for different purposes or configure them as a logical port. And they do not have, as of right now, September 8th, 2020, the documentation finished for the SG2100 for this part, but I talked to Decade and they did let me know they're working on it. It should be updated soon. So probably even by the time you're watching this video, depending on how far in the future it is, that documentation may already be available. But you can follow along if you order one of these and it gets there before the documentation. It's the same configuration as the SG3100 where they have a step-by-step -step instructions. And I've covered this, I believe in other videos of how you can create these as logical ports and tag them. I've also covered this uh, more in depth on the XG7100 as well from Netgate. Now they've also added this, which is the lineup in terms of where it falls into different speed. And by the way, they update this based on versions of PFSense. So as PFSense has updated versions, if the speed gets better, they will reevaluate these just an FYI. Also, there is a crypto chip. If we'll go back over here to the page on this. And the crypto chip is listed as inactive. My understanding is this will be a PFSense 2.5 feature. They will have better advantages um, to the crypto because there are going to be some updated drivers. Once again, that will update further. So this will actually get faster in the future uh, based on tweaking of drivers and updates from PFSense. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, they're going to have that. But when they have and comes down to the speed, they do have all the different speeds broke down here. So you can see where it kind of fits in the lineup. Your IPsec VPN based on your, and we'll show you at the top here, iPerf traffic. Now iPerf is a benchmark I've used in the past. It's more of a synthetic benchmark, not necessarily representative of real world traffic. That's why they do both. They do iPerf traffic and iMix traffic. iMix traffic is a whole mix of traffic run across and that is more representative of real world traffic. That's why you get these two different numbers and you can see how much different it is. And that's because the traffic you're running just doing a speed test is not the same as actually functioning. So you may have a device that can speed test really fast because it can handle a single packet stream faster than it can handle a mix of, well, more realistic traffic that goes across your network. And uh, they have it all broke down here. So you go from 74 to 118, uh, 46 to 68. So you get a speed bump in power over the SG1100. So you're not just more memory, a little bit faster processor on there. And of course that you know, kind of plays across all the way for all the different rules and everything you create. Now that's still not as fast as the SG3100. So if you have a need for even more speed on your VPN, especially if a lot of people are working from home and you want to remote into uh, that or have a site to site setup using like a 3100, um, that's still going to get you a little bit more speed. So take that into consideration. And if you are someone who says, I just really need a lot more speed, well, just keep going down the list until you find the one that matches the speed that works for you on the comparison chart here. 
Um, but other than that, um, having more memory, being able to run things like Sericata and all the other packages, or as these packages over time get bigger because they have more features, that's a nice addition to have that extra memory. I've had no problems with it. It's been a great device. I didn't bother taking this one apart, and unless there's enough demand, I'll tweet out some pictures of it taken apart. Um, I just didn't want to dig out the security bits to try to fit into it and take it apart. Um, but I, there's nothing serviceable inside, so there wasn't anything interesting for me to really dive into or talk about. But my overall, I like it. It's a welcome lineup, kind of that fitting in between, just like I had them stacked, the little bit more features, a little bit more speed than your 1100, but hey, saving $100 from buying a 3100. And I'm hoping that NetGate has some more devices where in the future, as they come out with new devices, we see more of these SFP ports on there. Uh, this is just going to be a more common way companies are handing it off with fiber becoming more prolific and more companies offering it from the vendor standpoint. Or even if you're using these uh, to start as a fiber distribution to get to another end of the office, but you still need routing, not a direct connection, once again, fiber handoffs are kind of handy. And if you don't want to use the fiber handoff, I mean, you can still have a standard WAN port, so it's not like you have to use it. It's still got the standard WAN port right next to it. Uh, so hopefully this was insightful. Questions, comments, concerns, head over to the forums, leave some messages below, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.